Okay, Harem. You got this. Just don't fuck it up. I might have to slap you across your dwarven face. I'm hungry. When we stop. I will, in fact, slap you across your fucking dwarven ass face. Perfect. Perfect. Damn it. How is that the shortest path? Oh, I see. It's because of the open terrain, that's why. Cool. Come on. Yes! You succeeded in the hunt! Okay, so I need to get back to the capital ASAP. A problem demands your personal attention, your grace. Your acquaintance, Oleg, has been refusing to pay his taxes for, a month, for months now, even though his trading post is located in your lands. The fool didn't realize he should have come to you immediately, but even so, please lend him your ear. What's the matter, Oleg? Oleg grimaces, making a clear effort to not spit on the floor. Since the moment you founded this barony, your grace, I became your subject. But I'm, al but I'm still also a subject of the Eldori and Restov. When you brought down the Stag Lord, I thought my troubles were over, but no! My whole life I've paid taxes to Restov. Now on top of that, your tax collectors darken my doorstep. Mm-hmm. Advisors, thoughts? Your Grace, the Ardori Sword Lords are true allies and the backbone of the barony. I would hope you still value Lady Jamandi's support and won't let such short-term interests undermine our alliance. Oleg is far more important than a few months worth of taxes. Collecting now would ruin a kind and honest, if somewhat clueless, man. Please keep this in mind, Your Grace. Oleg, which would you rather swear allegiance to, Restov or myself? Oleg looks like he's surprised to be asked. He thinks for a moment and you realize he's making an extraordinary effort to be polite. Forgive me, your grace, but regardless of what banner they fly, all tax collectors are little more than bandits to me. Really? Well... Yeah. We should probably talk to the sword lords about it. A wise decision. Should you wish, I will write Lady Jamandi myself and explain the matter to her. Perhaps she'll agree to a sensible sharing of taxes between the barony and Restov. I'm certain we can reach an agreement with Jamandi and acquire the trading post in short order without any direct conflict with the Sword Lords. Cool. Is that Casil? Yes. On your orders, I've reviewed our military forces. The results are disappointing, Your Grace. We need require new recruits. The sooner the better. We can introduce some re restrictions, limiting how many could qualify for the service. However, under the these circumstances, I feel they shouldn't be very stringent. I, indeed, I would recommend we announce that anyone can join the army, and I'm sure that we'll find many brave men among your subjects, ready to protect their lands. Hmm. Yeah, unrestricted recruitment. I mean, it sounds like a bad idea, but if anyone steps out of line, I'll just walk up and punch him in the nuts. Well, 
Wow, the, the, the troll raids already began. Ha ho ho ho. Okay. Well, we'll see what happens there. Uh, it's been an hour and 40 minutes, even though there's a lot that I'm going to cut out of this video. I, uh... Mm, I mean, yeah, since there is a lot that I'm going to cut out, I figure I may as well just continue. That may be best. We saw something that probably no one else had ever seen before. Beside the blazing campfire stood a kobold who had wrapped himself in a worn-out elven robe. On the far side of the clearing, three enormous trolls shuffled their feet, hesitating. The kobold stretched out his calloused paws and with immense gravity hissed and mumbled incomprehensibly. We could get- we could barely even guess at all what at all this meant. Fucking shit. Sneak closer. Hiding behind the elm trees, we crept close enough to hear the mysterious kobold's mumbling. We- what? We tried to make sense of what was happening by interpreting gestures and body language. It seemed like the kobold was shaming the trolls for cowardice. Hissing and grunting, he repeated Hargalka several times, causing the trolls to tuck their heads and slouch a little deeper each time. It must have been the name of a very important troll, a chieftain, a pack leader, someone they regarded as an authority. Whatever the case, the kobold's words hit their target. I lost my place in the text. One of the trolls, the tallest and mightiest one, <laughs> stood straight and stepped forward. His enormous claw involuntarily scratched the bloodied shoulder, which held a burned-in pattern. The other trolls' shoulders looked to have the same pattern as though they had all been branded. The kobold stretched his arms towards the troll, his sleeve still on fire. Flames! 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 The kobold hissed menacingly in common. Flames! 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 The trolls replied in their own tongue. The brave troll stepped closer to the fire. We took the chance and tried pushing the brave troll into the fire. Ho ho! Bam! The huge troll fell right into the flames, jumping out immediately and running out of the glade with screams of pain and terror. The two who remained just blinked and looked around, confused. The kobold, however, was ready for battle. Calm and collected, he was already hissing the magical words of his incomprehensible spells, preparing to bring their power to bear against us. Oh no. <laughs> I might regret this. Yes, there we go. Why are you... I don't understand. God fucking damn it. Just why did they even... Okay. That was odd. Wand of Bless. Oh, I see. A cloak. Mm.